Hi, and thank you for joining me for another video. Today I want to talk about holiness and how one can be holy. The reason this video is so important is because the concept of holiness has actually been corrupted by the mystical junkies that permeate our religion today. We've seen them all before. Individuals, in an attempt to be holy, not only fail, but actually alienate, confuse, and ridicule others in their own group while doing so. Why? Well, first, because they've been instructed incorrectly by their teachers. And secondly, because their reasons for wanting to be holy were ultimately not for the sake of heaven. But anyways... In this video, I want to try to explain a healthy notion of holiness so that you can avoid hurting yourself and others in pursuit of it. And I also want to try to expose unholy behavior so that you could know what to avoid. So first, let's define holiness. Kadosh, holy, really means set apart or designated. We actually see that in the Hebrew scriptures, the word kadosh is used in two ways. First, for things that are made holy because God deemed them so. And this could be any of the above, from days, utensils, to food. Secondly, the Hebrew scriptures speak about the act of one becoming holy, which is really what we mainly want to discuss in this lecture. Friends, Torah tells us to be holy as the Creator Himself is holy. This is not optional. It's a direct command from the Almighty Himself. Now, we said earlier that God can designate something holy if He wishes. Anything except man. Why not? Well, because by doing so, He would trample upon our free will, which is outside His main blueprint for humanity. Some might say that weren't Kohan and the priest in the temple deemed holy by God, and they were people. Well, not really. Kohanim and even kings held a holy office. So in other words, their position was holy or sanctified, but they themselves had to sanctify themselves like everyone else. You see, it is up to us to make ourselves holy. However, the big question is, how? Well, like the Navi writes, that the holy God is made holy through righteousness. So, you and I, being created in the image of the Almighty, are made holy in the same way. Which is what? By doing good. So, holiness is the culmination of living a righteous life. Another question we should ask is, how do we know when we've reached holiness? Now, this question is a little harder to answer, but I would say when one's good deeds outweigh one's bad, one should know that they are on their way to holiness. So let's recap. How does one become holy? Only through righteousness or goodness. So it's not about dressing in a certain way or praying extra or eating certain hashkachas or anything like that, that one attains holiness. Although all these things can be a result of being holy. How? Well, this concept really goes against what many people, including Christians, believe in regards to holiness. For example, when it is taught in the New Testament that it's not what goes into your mouth that makes you unholy or unclean, but what comes out. The reason this is false is because the New Testament failed to appreciate the reason for the ceremonial mitzvahs in the first place, which is not to show off, but to train individuals to do good. So, by shunning the training, you not only defile yourself by disobeying your creator, you also fail to train yourself morally and thus still miss the mark. Now, I just explained the ideal, but unfortunately, this is not the way most people behave nowadays. Today, most people screw it all up. How? Well, by basically putting the cart in front of the horse. Friends, people, especially in Judaism, have begun to desocialize the ethical meaning of the mitzvahs to such a level that the performing of mitzvahs have become the ends instead of just the means of repairing the world. For example, this is clearly evident with the Hachgacha Wars, right? When people are in an attempt to be holy, refuse to eat an item with a certain hexer, when they themselves will say that this item is still kosher for everyone else to eat, but it's just not kosher for them to eat. This, when done publicly, not only does not bring you any closer to holiness, but actually causes you to tarnish the faith 
by actually depleting the mitzvahs of any meaning. Now, I'm not saying that if someone, because of their righteousness, makes a silent commitment to God to be stricter or, or only buy a product from a more religious court as a way to strengthen his person-to-person -person deeds, this could certainly be a righteous act. No, the problem arises when they make a public spectacle of the act and let their personal obligations override their social ones. Because all of the personal mitzvahs are just there to strengthen the social ones. And no, my friends, all the mitzvahs are not relative. Some mitzvahs are greater than others. And many people fail to understand this and thus make the purpose of us receiving these mitzvahs ultimately meaningless. The problem that most often occurs is that in attempts to sanctify ourselves, we fail to sanctify our intentions and actually end up making the commandments idols themselves or the ends instead of the means. We also see this on how certain religious groups within Judaism actually try to legislate such behavior to its members, piling on unnecessary stringencies which should be reserved for the righteously pious who use them in order to morally train themselves to become even more righteous and good to others, but rather becomes an end instead of means. And by doing this, they do, like I said before, what Rav Menachem Mendel of Kutz said, that they make a mitzvah into a vodazora. And again, I repeat that all the ceremonial mitzvahs in the Torah are just there to train you on a personal level so you can react on a social one. So, in other words, if you can make a connection between your stringencies and physically making the world a better place, my friends, you're just wasting your precious time. Now, the final and most corrupted form of holiness stems from the mystical movements that apart from stripping all the rationale from the Torah have actually made the narrative no different from any other ethnocentric meaningless text of the past. Friends, when we replace the practical meaning of the mitzvahs with mystical ones, the mitzvahs themselves become meaningless. How? Because they are no longer effective on a practical level, which is the only level that matters and is the only scale which our holiness is judged against. That's why there is such a market for such texts like the Zohar because the Torah itself is not preoccupied with the mystical or the spiritual but focuses on the here and now because that's what counts. My friends, every minute you spend in the mystical is a minute that you have thrown away. So in other words, mysticism is narcissism and is antithetical to righteousness not to mention holiness. Holiness, my friends, cannot be bought, and it cannot be transferred genetically or won vicariously. Demons can give it to you or take it away from you. No, friends. One becomes holy only by physically doing good in this world and nothing else. So live Torah and do good. If you're interested in learning more about Judaism, I want you to please visit BeJewish.org. And if you're interested in converting to Judaism, I want you to go to your local Orthodox synagogue and tell the rabbi, I want to be Jewish. Thank you.